Good morning. So Jared gets here at six uh, in the morning. I wake up at about six and we sold out of one of our parts uh, for our clamps uh, that we make. And so I called up Jared, I said, hey, can you hop on the lathe and run some of those? The blocks, uh, these guys right here, they're the large end of the clamp. Um, and it's a square part that we do totally on the lathe, which is actually, I think, kind of fun. Anyways, um, just to give you guys a little behind the scenes on that, it was uh, one, of, one of those mornings because when Jared went to change out, see where is that? The, we've got this, this is an extra version of it, but the center screw here stripped out. Uh, and that's something I found with some of these Chinese tools is that oddly, they're pretty good, um, but the, a lot of times the set screws or fasteners are just junk and it's a cheap thing to replace. Anyways, he took the blade, uh, see here, how do you do that? What, you, you took the blade out? I uh, you know how to drill from the back side here. But you had to take the blade out to drill through. Take, take the, no, couldn't get the blade out. Oh, and so you could drill through without yeah. hitting the blade? Yep. Got it. So he didn't take the blade out, obviously, but was able to drill through and got it out. Broke a five millimeter drill, which is not a big deal at all. Um, but, you know, the honest answer is by the time that's all said and done, you're looking at, you know, half an hour or an hour to get tooled back up. Um, but that's how a lot of how we've run our shop to date and something I've been thinking about is, you know, we work on the jobs that come in um, and then if we get slow, which really we haven't been slow for a long time, um, we'll go back to building inventory for clamps, for the targets that we make, for other products that we make, which to me has always been really smart because it means you're generally always able to do something that builds you know, cash or builds an asset that you can sell and turn into cash. You know, you're always making money. That's important. Um, so yeah, we got to get a little bit better about setting up jobs more quickly and um, little things like retooling up the machine and so forth. Uh, on that note, um, our first set of tools arrived. So this is kind of funny. You know, we had the Kenna Metal and Seco test parts and then Sandvik, I opened the boxes that I have not even opened this yet. Um, I'm really excited. However, they also sent over the draft um, invoice, draft because I think there might be some wiggle room. Um, not cheap, not cheap at all. So, can I get that open? Hold on, I'll grab a knife here. Um, I don't wanna judge yet on price alone. My question or concern, which I told the Sandvik guys, like look, you know, I've heard that you guys are more expensive, but worth it. But my question is, am I going to be able to make it worth it with my equipment, my machines, my jobs? So these are positive, um, positive tooling for steel, though. So it'll, they'll fit the same tool that we use right now for aluminum, but in steel, which is awesome. Here, I think I'm actually more excited about are these little um radius button tools so more to come on that we got to get these set up these are actually for a rush job today and that's a really um exciting thing for me because it goes back to how you you know someone was asking how do you get jobs and do work and i'll come back we'll talk more about that but um you know these the customer would like them today it is very good money they want a quality product here's one sitting on that arbor the last thing we've got to do is turn a pulley radius groove in there and then press in some oil light bushings turn that iv and we're done so we'll get that going after jared finishes up on those clamps um, and then I wanted to talk about iron worker. So I'm going to go up next week and take a look at a uh, Cleveland steel iron worker, which is made actually by Edwards, which is a common name. Um, Cleveland steel resells the Edwards and they have a little deal where they provide tooling for Edwards. Edward provides iron workers for them. I like the fact that it's an Ohio company. Uh, we're also looking at a Gika, uh, which is like double the price. Uh, and we'll talk more about that when I have a chance to sort of see them and evaluate them. My question is going to be how useful the shearing is for our shop in preparing material versus having to band saw it or dewalt it. Um, we're definitely going to get one. It's just a question of which one. We're going to use uh, that iron worker as well to mount our rollers for the conveyor system, for the infeed, for the saw. Those are 716 hex. It'll make quick work of those. 
This is amazing. These were from McMaster Car. They're good quality. They're each rated at 265 pounds. It's like the first time in the history of mankind that uh, McMaster Car has been the cheapest source for something. I thought that was quite funny. Um, what else is on the, oh, today, the boat switch came back. When the customer went to install it, the, um, don't drop parts like that. This little zinc piece in here that it mounted to like fell off and then he saw that it was on a D shaft. So obviously we would have made it differently had we known that, no big deal. Uh, we just press fit that D shaft in there and then I chased that tapped hole out to the end so it mounts to the D shaft, unfortunately on the side, which is obviously not how you would normally do it, but uh, it should work fine. So that goes back out today. I just took a photo of this Kenna metal insert. This is a video that we're launching, I think next week, on some lessons that we learned on getting really good surfaces in 1018 steel. And then I've got to go, speaking of 1018, um, test this Lakeshore carbide, I think they call it the War Mill. Uh, James over at War Machine sort of inspired its design, but it has a 1.3 inch length of cut, but it's necked back so that you can cut, I believe, 2.5. 2.52 inch reach, which is awesome. We are gonna use that for the A-bomb uh, parking attachment part there. I'm just gonna run a test cut in uh, 1018 to see if my recipe is any good before I go make a fool of myself on a video. And uh, some orders to ship out, which is exciting. And that was, uh... oh, the last thing I wanted to ask you guys about. So Jared and I have had kind of a debate. You know, Take, for example, the clamp project. We have a mm, number 12 carbide drill that we only use when we drill out those blocks, the job that he's running uh, right now. And it works great. I don't have a ton of carbide drills though. And so instead of putting them in the drill bin, which is, has been a great way to keep our stuff organized, these little, what do you call them, Hoyt, H-U-O-T, um, Rather than keep them in there, I keep them sort of on a project basis. So right now it's just a McMaster bag, but we have some little fixtures and tools that we use uh, for the clamp project over here. So that's the debate. Do I, um, I like the idea of keeping some, it's not custom tooling, but you know, certain reamers or drills, in this case, because it's a carbide drill, it's so much different. The feeds and speeds and the care and use of it than a normal high speed steel drill. I like keeping tools like that on a project specific area or storage versus in the general sort of job shop bin. But I would be curious to see uh, what you guys think. Other than that, folks, have a great weekend. Uh, I'm so excited for this series. It's everyone has sort of said, oh, don't put up more on your plate. This is really easy and honestly, it's a stress reliever for me. I enjoy getting to share some stuff with you. Uh, hopefully you guys learn something. I know I'm gonna learn something. And uh, you know, so often I was trying to make notes of things that I wanted to bring up in future Wednesday widgets and it felt contrived and I didn't like that I had to keep it bottled in or on a list. Um, and I really enjoy it. It's really fun and uh, let me know what else you guys wanna see in the comments below and we'll try to work that in. Otherwise, we're gonna just talk about how we're, you know, daily life here and how we're running the shop, the successes and failures. Have a good weekend, folks.